right, it is uh, 4.02, and I am going to call this meeting to order. Um, this is the uh, November 19th, 2019, uh, Transportation and Parking Commission meeting. Um, I want to welcome everybody. Um, I also want to let everybody know that this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Um, and I'd like to start with introductions. My name is Jim Nash. I am the chair and I'm the Ward 3 City Councilor. Why don't we start on this side and go around with it. Gary Hartwell, Citizen. Um, Adam Novit, Citizen. Alan Verse, on Planning Board. Wayne Biden, Planning Sustainability Office. Beth Capital, PPW. Nancy Forrestal, Assistant City Collector. Maggie Chan, DPW. Devin Bruce, Citizen. Donald Scally, DPW. Welcome, everybody. All right. Um, be, uh, the first thing on our agenda, which we proceed public comment with, is our promotion of the PACE car program. Uh, I'll just make it brief that, um, uh, that I spoke with um, uh, uh, Cynthia Groberge, and uh, we have about 300 people signed up but for PACE car currently, but like in the last year or two, there's only been like under 10 people. And it's been more, more interest has been expressed from people outside the city than in the city to sign up. And I spoke with the mayor the other day and in terms of the, uh, the, the next term for council, that I'd be willing to work with him and partner on how, looking at ways that we can uh, revitalize the PACE car program. So anyway, PACE car program, <coughs> for our member of the public here is that, uh, is that it's, uh, you're taking a pledge to drive the speed limit and the idea is if everybody starts driving the speed limit, we'll have less speeding. So anyway, okay, so that's done. Um, and now on to public comment. Is there anybody here present who would like to speak to the Transportation and Parking Commission? Sure. Uh, <laughs> and your your name and um, and your address, if you feel comfortable sharing your address. Yeah, Alex Khan, 17 Summer Street. Um, I'm just here. I thought I would see some neighbors here, but it's just me. Um, I'm here to ask for traffic calming on Summer Street between State Street and King Street. People are always speeding to try to get to the light at the end before it turns red. Um, I have my traffic calming application. Anyone wants to sign it? I know that's the official process to um, get the city to take action. Um, some fog lines or speed humps or whatever would, would go a long way. I'm sure there's ways to, um, to help in very economically. So, thanks. So, and do you know how to submit your application? You, uh, once it's once you've got your signatures, you bring it to the DPW office okay. and. It'll um, be handled from there. All right, thank you. Sure. Uh, while you were speaking, we had another member of the public show up. Would, would you like to step forward and speak to anything? Or uh, I just thought your that. name and uh, your address. Uh, what? Your name and address, if you My know. name and address here? Or uh, All right. Uh, if you could give your, your name and if you're willing to give your address, Mary Jo Stanley, and I live at 85 Pine Street, Thank you. Florence. And I just wanted to bring up a, my concern about the intersection of Pine and Maple, which has been very bad for a while anyway. And now a white fence has been put up along the downhill slope of Maple. So if you're coming north on Pine, it was really difficult to see what was coming up the hill, and now it's even worse. And I, I'm assuming everybody knows that, but I don't. I just want to make sure you're all aware of that. I know it's something that you've been talking about for a while, trying to resolve that very dangerous intersection. But I was kind of shocked, actually, that that the fence put up there where it was already dangerous. So, thank you. It's a private fence. It's a yard fence. A private, okay. a private fence. A yard fence. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um. No. Um. 
uh, public comment is done. Uh, would somebody like to make a motion to approve <coughs> our minutes from the October 15th meeting? So move to approve October 15th minutes. I'll second. Thank you. Um, any discussion of the, the minutes? All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any abstentions? I will abstain. Okay, one abstention. Any no's? All right. On to the next thing. Um, reports from departments and subcommittees. Any announcements? Presentations. Usually the department heads get done. I, yes, I just have a few things to mention. Um, we had a very ambitious paving program this year, totaling just about six and a half miles. So we paved Burt's Pit Road, Chesterfield Road, Spring Street, Main Street and Leeds, Cross Street, Bridge Road, Glendale Road, and Brisk Drive. Um, and that was about six and a half million dollars worth of work. So we had a very busy summer. Um, also did some work to the Clement Street Bridge and that is uh, reopened all as well. Um, and I also want to mention that we have um, speed tables that have been installed on Florence Road and Montauk Street, so those have historically been there. Um, but what we did was we painted advanced morning markings. I don't know if anybody has seen those. Um, but we thought that there might be some visibility problems with people approaching these uh, speed tables and not being able to see them until they're like right on top of them, especially the ones on Florence Road. So we actually did some approaches on either side, which is a series of um, lines that they can increase in size as you get closer to um, the speed table. So anyway, I don't know if anyone's seen those or if they like them or not, um, but those those are done and we hope everyone likes them. Um, and the other thing that I will mention is that we are very aware of several problematic intersections around the city. Um, there are a list of them that are currently under review and um, they include the intersection of Pine and Maple as well as some intersections along the State Street corridor as well as some intersections out on Route 66 that we are looking at ways around improving safety. So um, we hear kind of the same thing from a lot of people and it's important to know that, that we are moving in a direction to make some improvements, um, but there, there needs to be some engineering around that first. And those are the DPW updates. Uh, I just want to add to Director that Mara Glennon, who we met with with Chief Casper over the summer, I haven't seen the new striping, but she said to me the other day at the grocery store, please thank uh, uh, the Chief and the Director for the new uh, line striping. It's really terrific. Oh, I'm glad she likes it. Okay, that's She great. wanted me to say that. <laughs> okay, she lives right there, so I'm, yeah, she's very I'm happy, happy that she's happy. That's great. And just a couple of things. Um, we're about to close Valley Bike for the year. We, we keep track of it regionally, but about 280,000 miles have been ridden on Valley Bike since we started the system. Um, and uh, Northampton actually has more riders from Northampton than any of the six towns in the system. And we're negotiating a scope, scope of service at the MassDOT for the next um, expansion. We expect to add four new stations in Northampton as part of the process. Uh, and then last week, a week and a half ago, we cut the ribbon on the new uh, Rocky Hill Greenway. It's a mile long from San Diego Road down to Burska Road. It's the longest bike path we have outside of railroad rights away. So it's, sort of, it's more complicated right now we go railroad. Cool. Any other reports? Okay. Um, no. I'll just say I have to leave it out actually. If you have uh, Health in England, I just found out that um, bike share was uh, reimbursable. That's great. Yeah. Really? Really. Yeah. So if you have Health in England or possibly other health insurances, um, bike share is reimbursable, so it could be free for you. Fascinating. All right. Um, on to matters before the commission. Uh, the first is going to be, first item is a discussion of long-term parking in the downtown area. Uh, we, the mayor's office has sent forward two proposed ordinances. Um, I'm gonna pull them up. Uh, the councilor Shearer is not here, so I'm 
doing double duty here. Um, first, here is the ordinance. Uh, this um, has to do with, um, so on Pleasant Street, we, uh, we've done a, uh, a, a rebuild of Pleasant Street in uh, recent years uh, that, um, that there were parking spaces uh, put at this location, but they haven't been metered. This is uh, basically starts around uh, uh, Northampton Bike and then proceeds down uh, towards, what is it? Um, what's the medical building there? Anyway, there, uh, um, I think there's probably uh, 10 or so spaces there. They haven't been metered. Um, and that uh, the mayor's office, uh, in response to a discussion that um, occurred at city council and relates to an item a little later on our agenda, was looking at ways to create more long-term parking. Um, I will pull up the map here. I think Maggie's the one who pulled all of this together, right? Thank you. Oh, I pulled up the ordinance again. All right, all right. Ciao. Oh, map, there we go. So over on this side, if you can see the little, uh, the yellow line, um, that's going to be changed into long-term, the proposal is to change this into long-term parking. Uh, the, there will be meters it, within, with a low hourly rate and they'll have the red caps. So anybody using uh, the, uh, the city parking permits can park there um, all day long. Um, Typically, these are the permits are, are purchased by uh, city businesses for employees. And did I summarize that pretty well, Nancy? Um, well, we have a number of residents who purchase them. Thank you. Um, there, there's a high population of residents who live in the downtown area who purchase those, um, as well as employees mm -hmm. um, of, of businesses in those general areas. And, um, there are firms and businesses that will purchase them for their employees. So it's a good cross-section of folks. Right. Thank you for clarifying. All right. And then, do you have to have a permit to park in these no. spaces? No. Or anyone can park them. They're long-term, um, so it's, you can, do a much longer, right now we have the two hour meters, we have four hour, and then there's the long term. Um, so they can go up to 10 hours. And so it's good for a, a business day, you know, if you're an employee or if you're a resident to cover that amount of time that the meters are enforced. And then um, we'll provide an over, overnight parking for, for some folks, depending upon snow emergencies and, and areas. Now I'll pull up the other, which has to do with uh, a section on Bridge Street. It is next to, um, largely next to a historic Northampton. Right now there are striped parking spaces there, uh, but they do not have meters. And this proposal would put meters on these uh, parking spaces um, again, they would be the long-term parking spaces with the red caps that would allow um, people with these permits to park um, throughout the day um, with, the, you know, not having to pay the, the, the meter fee because they have the permit display. Um, so. What about the one handicap spot? Oh, thank you, Meg. Yes, there's a handicap spot being added here. In this area, um, that um, there are currently no handicapped parking spaces on the street. And this would add a handicapped space on the street. Um, so, um, 
So my thoughts on how to move this forward, and I had a discussion with the mayor yesterday, is that um, I think that it, that we need to, th these were introduced uh, to the TPC just early, uh, late last week, and I think in terms of recommending these changes that we need to do a little more outreach and um, like get in touch with Historic Northampton, uh, let some of the businesses know on Pleasant Street that this is coming down the pike, and that I would want to propose that um, that we take these items and that we table them for this month uh, until the next month's meeting um, and uh, let pub the public know that this is before the TPC and they can come here and uh, you know provide any thoughts they have on on these proposals and um, and I think this is the best place to have the discussion around you know these parking spaces rather than the, you know send them to council council and doesn't have all the expertise that are sitting at our uh, in our commission right here. So, th could somebody make a motion to <laughs> to table this and have a, a discussion next month? Uh, I make a motion to uh, table this and have a discussion next month uh, after informing local residents. Right. Yep, that sounds good. Okay. I will second that. Thank you. Is there any more discussion on this? Putting it on the agenda to inform the public of what we're doing? Uh, I can tell you right now that the historic Northampton folks, I've been getting emails from them all day about cutting down trees, and they're all focused on that. I. I, I expect that you know businesses like around the bike store and all of that have no awareness that this is going on. Um, all of this is in my ward and I will walk around and knock on doors and we'll probably have 10, 15 people there. <laughs> so, um, as well as the businesses. Um, I, I, I do want to add that, um, that this was in response to a, a Later on the agenda, we're going to be looking to change some uh, long-term spaces in the Bridge Street area to um, short-term parking because they have, they're right in front of some businesses. And that at council, there was some concern about where are people who, who have permits, where you know, we're eliminating six spaces there, where are these people gonna park? And the mayor's office responded with, uh, suggesting all of these places. Um, and I think it, it, it's also related to the recent change that went on with the depot parking lot. That um, There was long-term parking there. That currently is no longer a, because we have this strange uh, rental agreement, uh, at least with uh, the depot parking lot, um, that now it's being managed privately and we've lost the, the opportunity to have the, the long-term parking spaces there. So again, you know, between the depot and the other Bridge Street ordinance, um, this, this is a way to create more long-term parking. All right, so uh, any more discussion? Okay, all in favor of tabling till next month so we can do some more public outreach, say aye. 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 Uh, any abstentions? Any? You're abstaining. Abstaining, and any no's? Okay. On to the next item. This, has, this is from last month's agenda, where uh, we weren't quite sure um, what was being discussed here, because it mentions Pleasant Street and off Gleason Plaza has to do with um, a, um, a handicapped parking space in the parking lot, which is the depot parking lot. 
which the city no longer controls. This is um, uh, that actually what we're doing is we're taking off the books any language that refers to that parking lot. Um, we're not eliminating a handicapped parking space. Um, that um, and I prior to this meeting I took a walk of the of the depot parking lot. I counted seven handicapped parking spaces there, and I spoke. Uh, uh, with uh, Nancy prior to the meeting and uh, we both concurred that seemed to be an ample amount of handicapped parking spaces they are also uh, uh, five of them are up near the platform uh, for the, the the train station uh, and then two more farther down more towards Pleasant Street so they seem to be you know located um, at other ends of the parking lot um, I just wanted that information out there before we go in strike in this uh, consider striking this language from um, the record. So, um, would somebody like to make a motion? I'm going to to delete the best note. Okay. Um, so, order uh, 19.137. Uh, an ordinance to amend chapter 312 vehicles and traffic. Um, Ms. Bruce is voting to uh, send this forward with a positive recommendation. With a recommendation to delete as noted. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any abstentions? Any no's? <coughs> okay. So uh, we're up to item C, uh, discussion of language regarding former depot lot ordinance to amend chapter 312 of the code of ordinances by amending section 312-110. Um, uh, that, so in the, um, in our ordinance, the, the depot lot, we, we, the depot lot is no longer um, a, a city lot, and we, this is cleaning up language um, in our ordinance to strike out any reference to the depot lot. Fun stuff, huh? <laughs> so, um, would somebody like to make a motion to um, send this forward with a positive recommendation? Order. So moved. Okay. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any <coughs> abstentions? One abstention. Any no's? Okay. Sure. Um, I, I'm left uncertain about how the city gives away parking, which is a public asset, to a private entity to manage it. I, I understand this is an ongoing thing, but even at our last meeting, we heard public comment that that was really upsetting to some people. So I, I just, I'm left a little confused how that process occurred and what public notice happened before it was agreed upon. Thank you. Okay. Um, I can ask the mayor's office to come to our <laughs> December meeting, but you're not going to be here. Yeah. No, um, I, I, I wanted to just say that's why I have saying that's all. Wrong. Okay. Thank you. Um, da, da, da. Okay, we're up to D. Discussion relative to parking on Bridge Street. Uh, ordinance to amend section 312-109 of the Code of Ordinances to convert six long-term parking spaces on Bridge Street to two-hour parking. Um, I read 
that part. So these are spaces that are uh, uh, it, near the corner of Holly and Bridge Street. There are the uh, some antique shops, and um, there are a number of metered spaces there that are long-term parking spaces. What recently happened was that when we changed the depot lot, that it parking is hydraulic. And what started happening was that at those metered spaces, people with permits started parking there. And that what were the on-street metered spaces were now being taken up by long-term parking. And that uh, they, uh, that the uh, businesses uh, gave me a call. I went over in there and met them. They also called the parking department. And they also set up to have a meeting with the mayor. And the mayor um, uh, decided to, uh, uh, committed to sending forward this, this ordinance before us here. Um, and uh, with the hopes that um, uh, city council would quickly approve the, this matter um, to, to change the spaces to short-term parking. Um, that um, and this would be basically the, the same as the um, spaces in the downtown area. Am, am I correct on that? Are these 20 cents per hour or, or per? I mean, uh, quarters 20 minutes or are they 15? We get says here. 75 cents a minute. Excuse me, an hour. 75 an hour. Okay. Um, so the near to downtown rate. Okay. And um, this uh, <laughs> this um, or this ordinance has already been to legislative matters, and that we had a really lengthy discussion at council last week about whether to send it here or not. And um, because if we did, it would delay things. And I uh, took the liberty as the chair to put it on the agenda. And I would I'd like to. Um, uh, have the TPC send this, send a message to council for Thursday's meeting saying that uh, TPC weighed in on this and, um, and thought this was a good idea. Um, I'm absolutely in favor of this. And we've got a coffee shop, a post office, and a, and a business right there. So I recommend that we approve, uh, no, that we recommend to council yeah. Uh, expeditious approval of ordinance. Uh, one nineteen point one five nine. <laughs> yes, that one nineteen dash one five nine. Let's start that. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any noes? All right. Thank you, everybody. All right, let's see. Um, okay, now onto the juicy stuff. Okay. Um, <laughs> discussion of disability and pedestrian safety at downtown crosswalks. Uh, discussion to amend chapter 312 of the Code of Ordinances, section 27. Um, oh. Okay, uh, I'll, here's the, the section, 312.27. Uh, general prohibitions. No person shall allow, permit, or suffer any vehicle registered in his name to stand or park in any street, way, highway, road, or parkway under the control of the city in violation of any of the traffic rules or orders adopted by the city council <laughs> and in particular in any of the following places. Um, I'm afraid to click on where this might take us, but. Oh my goodness. Thank you. <laughs> More reading. Okay, A, within an intersection, except within those intersections where the installation of parking meters has been specifically approved by the Massachusetts Department of Public Works, upon any sidewalk, upon any crosswalk or within 10 feet of either side of a crosswalk where posted. I think that's actually the item we're here to discuss, so I'm gonna refrain from reading everything else. 
Um, so um, the, we're discussing this today at the uh, request of, of uh, Director Forrestal and that, um, that we spent a Friday afternoon a few weeks ago walking around downtown looking at various uh, crosswalks and um, so I'm gonna maybe let her take over here. Oh, also that the reason this is here at the request of the the parking group that uh, meets in the mayor's office that they had a discussion and felt that it was best if this came to the TPC to kick around and get our thoughts. So that's why this is here. And um, what would you? Well. It I handed over to you. Expanded that out so that people could see. Um, anyways, so it does state that upon any crosswalk or within 10 feet of either side of a crosswalk, where posted, <coughs> which means a sign. If you take a look at our crosswalks, there are no signs. It's not posted anywhere not to park within 10 feet of a crosswalk. Therefore, we can't enforce it. So if you look in particular at the downtown area along Main Street and along King Street, I'm going to bring up those Google Maps. Which one do you want? Um, you can go with the Main Street one. I have a particular concern with this crosswalk that's by Plenomisano. If you'll notice, we have parking spaces literally touching the crosswalks in this spot, meaning that the people who are stepping out into this crosswalk are committing themselves into a traffic flow before they can see the cars or the cars can see them. Because by ordinance, there's parking spots on either side of it. And the way that these parking spots are positioned, you are literally backing out of the spot into the crosswalk. You're backing into the crosswalk, into a main crosswalk that's um, widely used by people. Um, we know that the crosswalk situation in the downtown area is it's difficult to see everything happening all at once. And I think that our allowing cars to park literally touching the crosswalk is a tragedy waiting to happen. So I'm asking that this be amended so that where posted be removed and it states simply upon any crosswalk or within 10 feet of either side of a crosswalk, period. Another example of how dangerous it is to place parking spaces on top of crosswalks is on King Street in front of the Hotel Northampton area. If you look at the left side by where the old courthouse was, here, across the street, yeah, right there where that car is. Oops. So we're allowing cars, maybe not touching the crosswalk but people are stepping out because they can't see oncoming traffic and the traffic can't see them and we all know what king street looks like it's very very congested that parking space is within seven feet of that crosswalk so that's a small car imagine a pickup truck there or a van And if you look at the other side, circle around to the front of Hotel Northampton, look at how open it is here because there's no parking spaces right on top of it. Why do we have parking spots on one side and it's completely clear on the other side? And downtown, same idea. We see people constantly putting on their brakes, or people jumping back in the crosswalks because cars and people don't mix. And we don't need a tragedy and we don't need parking spaces on top of crosswalks. So what I'm asking is that we take a serious look at particularly 
the downtown business district where we have a lot of pedestrians and a lot of cars mixing together and eliminate this danger. It's a, can you legally park in those spaces now? Mm -hmm. Those are parking spots. They're not lined as it's such, down, are they? That's downtown. This is lined. This is a lined parking space. That's, oh. that's the nose of the parking spot. Okay, that one you would want to eliminate? I, I thought it was, you were referring to the one, the space in front of that gray car. No, no, that's, no. that's just a, an opening, a void. Yeah. So, so by changing that ordinance <clears throat> to say that there was no parking allowed within 10 feet of the crosswalk with, without respect to signage, right? So just within 10 feet of the crosswalk, right? That that change would automatically eliminate parking spaces that were within 10 feet of a crosswalk. Yes, there are some parking spaces that are within inches of a crosswalk. Right, so I mean, the, the one in front of Buena Misano is like particularly egregious because right. it's almost like the stripe passes into the right. into the crosswalk and the car automatically backs out into it. So yes. the, the sort of the de facto result for the, I don't know the exact right word for this, but the result of, of changing that ordinance would, would serve to eliminate that parking space. Yes. Okay, so just so that we're, we're clear on that, that's how that would work. And, and I propose that if it is a um, space that's designated as an <coughs> HP parking space, that that space be moved to the next one over. Okay. With consultation with the DPW to ensure that we have the correct specs in the right. And also, I mean, it's also, it's also sort of like the, the it seems to me that it's within the spirit of the original ordinance. It's just sort of a wording. It's, it's like a semantics problem that says, right? So it, it doesn't really seem to me like this huge change. Here. What was the amendment in 03? I don't know. What was it before it was amended? Hmm. And how many parking spots would this affect? <clears throat> Well, I, I mean, I have a couple of comments about this. We have more than 300 crosswalks in the city, so I'll start by saying I completely support this. I, I think it is a fantastic idea, um, and you have my full support on this, and I would go to city council and say I support this. Um, there's a but, um, and, and the but is that um, we have several hundred crosswalks, all of which would need to be audited I mean, with a specific concentration on, you know, the downtown area, because that's where most of your conflicts happen. Um, but it would be problematic to amend an ordinance prior to an audit of the crosswalks to see what, what we have to move. I mean, this is, this is a little bit of a project here, you know, kind of black, it, it's not even blacking out those lines. I mean, they have to be ground out. Mm -hmm. That you know, new measurements have to be taken, new parking zones have to be established. So this is this is definitely a little bit of a project, and I think it's a worthwhile one. Um, but I, I think there's some logistics around implementation of this that that we would need to work through. Now, there was a, a crosswalk <coughs> project. Was there something that planning was doing with crosswalks and inventory <coughs> crosswalks? Just we did a bike and head plan. We were trying to get a handle on where all the crosswalks were in the town. So we were trying to get, make sure they were all mapped out there. But it wasn't this sort of level of assessment. I mean, I mean we have an inventory of the crosswalks. You know, we can, <clears throat> we can see all of them. We would have to determine which of them is a problem. I mean, clearly that's a problem. You know, some of them aren't a problem. But it's there's an unknown number of problems. Um, you know, so let's say we have 358 crosswalks in the city, or I think it's 328, but it's, it's over 300. Um, you know, so if we say, okay, we have a problem with 100 of them, we then have to come up with a plan to remove that line, install a new line, rewrite whatever 
ordinances there is memorializing that parking how it currently is which has nothing to do with that crosswalk and then you know when this gets implemented the other ordinances get amended as well as, sure. as part of that because otherwise it's it's it wouldn't be enforceable i mean if we were to take and just strike this language which i agree with we should strike this language but that still looks like that right and, and i certainly appreciate that this is not something that can be done tomorrow this this is going to require a concerted effort and a cooperative effort to identify as you're saying the crosswalks that create this dangerous situation um, but my hope is that we actually move forward um, to a phase where we can put this all together um, and not just say yeah that's that's a problem and then it just dies in committee but i would truly like to see that this moves forward um, for the safety of everybody because I, i'm i'm thinking about the folks who are out there in the crosswalk as well as the people who are driving the car who all of a sudden have a person step out into the crosswalk and behind the car, car. I'm trying to see both sides of this. And we know, no matter who's at fault, a car hitting a person is never a good thing. And that's what I'm trying to avoid with in any way that we possibly can. But, and I'll, I, I mean, I'm talking about this more from an operational standpoint, from the DPW standpoint, but I mean, there's definitely impacts to businesses here, which, you know, it's not something that my department gets involved in. I mean, you know, we deal with lines and measurements and engineering, um, but the impacts to businesses um, and the parking available for people who are frequenting those businesses is, uh, I, I think, a conversation <coughs> that needs to be had at, at a level that's not mine. Um, but that's that's also a consequence. Right. I mean, you're going to lose just looking at this right here. I mean, you're going to lose one spot on the right and two on the left because the car backing out of the next spot to the left there is going to back right into the middle of that crosswalk as part of their turning radius theoretically. Um, so it, you know, you might even lose two on either side. I don't know what the measurements look like there. So I mean, you've just lost four. You know, potentially four really prime parking spots right there. Jim, is part of your outreach for the, that earlier one? Will you do an outreach to DNA to get them involved in this question? Yeah, that, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. so you can see it this way. Do we have any idea of how many parking places would be eliminated as a result of this? Well, it would require you know a, an overview of all of the in particular the downtown business district and, and we've seen that the downtown business district is expanded so we do need to look at the full downtown business district in particular and then the other ones on top of that oh so, so does that mean we don't to that i don't know exactly how many so how can we adopt this ordinance if we don't even have any idea how many parking places would be eliminated no i'm, I'm actually right at this point i'm asking that we take this as a serious um, uh, task and that we then move forward and i am more than happy to work with whatever committee or whatever department wants to bring forward their expertise to this um, the disability commission whomever want to get involved in this because i think that it is truly an important issue so we wouldn't is the proposal here to amend the section to eliminate those? Yeah, I think we have a number of topics on the floor here. And I think it, Nancy's original proposal was to amend uh, the language to take out where posted. Um, I think that it has precipitated uh, some other uh, questions around how many spaces and, um, and doing an audit uh, maybe just of downtown or citywide um, that um, so uh, so I think the place to start is to start with uh, Nancy's recommendation I, I, I want to first say I'm absolutely in support of it because I think it's the one cheap and best way you could protect protect pedestrians downtown and so I would weigh on safety over convenience of parking location um, I think what's stumbling is the mechanism. How do we go about it so that we don't throw 
you know, a project of this magnitude, you know, uh, across the fence and say, do this. Um, if we consider changing that language, we would still have to go into each ordinance and fix the parking location. So let's uh, let's follow through with the, the idea now of getting the signage out of the way as, as the problematic language, and then pick one or two issues downtown and ask for those one or two to be considered. Do the outreach with the businesses, and it will. It will be in, it will be educational. It will be informative to us to see how that goes down. Right. But we would at least get a start on it, and uh, changing that language doesn't change all of the three hundred. Well, I mean, it's. I, I mean, I think this is just a discussion at this point. I don't actually think there's anything to vote on here because voting on something would be sort of preliminary. I mean, we're, we're not ready to change anything. I think it's a good point that Nancy brought up. I think it's a good idea. And I think we now need to move to investigate that idea. And there's a lot of outreach and and auditing that's going to happen to figure out. I mean, you want to know how many parking spaces? I have no idea. It could be 300. It could be 50. It could be none, you know, or we know it's at least three. Um, so, I mean, I think there's there's a process we need to go through here, and DPW is going to be right in the middle of that. So I just don't think there's anything to vote on at this point. I think it's a, it's a discussion. So, so what I'm trying to say, though, is I think the process would be crosswalk by crosswalk, probably, once once you start you know, getting a handle on the audit process. That's right. I mean, this is probably contract work. Yeah. Can we can we like so if we voted to adopt the language. Of, that you proposed, then we would sort of create a situation where we had we we voted to make spaces that are currently exist in violation. Is that right? So if you say you can't have a crosswalk within ten feet, you can't have a parking space within ten feet of the crosswalk, and you vote to create that situation that you're voting to do, do I do you understand what I'm saying here so I guess maybe as a recommendation to move this forward would be to vote to table it to the next meeting which keeps it on the agenda or puts it on the agenda or however you want to say that with certain recommendations to do outreach and or to do a preliminary audit or, or something like that so that it Create some sort of path to move forward, um, and it keeps it in front of the committee. And does that sound like a sort of reasonable direction to go with this? So my thoughts on this are that our job is to recommend to council or the mayor's office um, what to do around any of the matters before us. And in this case, the the mayor's office is is asking us to weigh in on um, Director Forrestal's uh, proposal around eliminating this language to open the door on having the city start exploring whether or not these parking spaces should be eliminated. So I think that, um, that we're, not, we're not gonna change anything here. We're, we're, uh, I think we wanna send a message to the mayor's office whether yes or no, we think this is a good idea. Okay. And, um, so, and I don't know that a vote is required to do that. I mean, I, I think. Well, I, I think one is because that um, with the Nancy was sent here to get a recommendation from us as, as to whether or not we think this is a good idea to pursue. Um, I, that's the way I interpreted it. You know, and I think it would be. Um, helpful this is where Robert's rules is <laughs> so what formally have a motion that you know from Nancy to amend this language to delete where posted and send this back to the mayor's office for them to you know do all this technical work which that parking committee has been looking at over over the years and and they will send forward items to us uh, probably in the way that Director Lascalia has, uh, has outlined, that it, it'll be crosswalk by crosswalk where we'll be able to get public input. I understand we can vote on the specifics, 
Like, the thing that makes me nervous, I may totally agree with this in concept, but if you did the cross the line cross walk, it might be some make sense to be eight feet, and some make sense to be 15 feet. So I wouldn't be comfortable making a recommendation. I mean, going forward in terms of creating a safety zone around crosswalks, I'm all for. I'm not sure I want to do the specifics until we get that audit. That's right, the practical application might so, be very different than yeah. Sure. yeah, but how do we, how do we move this forward in a way that creates conditions to, to, to get the city to move forward with, with doing those crosswalk by crosswalk or the total the overall assessment or the outreach? Like, how do we get to? I want to make a recommendation. We support this in concept, pending a more detailed audit, okay, that's and coming back with, with the results of audit. So to do that, I'm learning this that. Director Forstall would need to withdraw her motion to around the language where posted, and then we would consider another motion, which is what you were suggesting, Mike. So, does you okay? Yes, with? that's good. Okay. I definitely support that. Okay. So repeat your motion. <laughs> so my motion is that we support this in concept and ask to come to come back to this committee after the, the detailed audit with recommendations. This Second. And a second. Any more discussion? Yeah, I mean, the discussion I'll have on that, and I will vote no on this because there's no details around the audit and who's doing it and what the time frame is. I mean, you know, I, I think that the conversation here is a good one. It's a good way to start what we're doing, and now we need to have an internal conversation about how we move this forward. Um, so I will vote no on this, but that's my explanation for why. Well, and I, my interpretation is that the, the, the mayor's office is asking for our input, whether we think this is worthy to look into, and, um, and it's the, the mayor's office decision as to how they want to go about doing this, and I imagine they'll be talking to the director as well. <laughs> They and, will. and I'm trying my best not to. Is there any language? <laughs> yeah. Is there any language about the intent of moving forward that would make you comfortable so that we could actually recommend it unanimously? Thank I mean, I know that's putting you on the spot, but I mean, you know, there there's some there's some agreement here that it's a good idea. But the problem is how do we go about it? That doesn't just you know. I mean, I think what what I'm comfortable saying and what I prefaced all my remarks by saying is I support this. Okay. Period. There's, there are, you know, sort of conditions of things that need to happen to implement this in a smooth way, um, and it is unclear what that process is. It's unclear what those conditions are. It's unclear what the timing is. It's unclear how this would be funded. Um, there are many things that are unclear here. So I'm, I'm not comfortable doing anything more than saying I support this sort of in, in theory. And I support continuing the discussion around it. Yeah. I, I'm not even sure that I can support it in concept. I mean, sure, everyone's in favor of safety, both for pedestrians and for cars, and no one wants to get run over or see anyone else run over. But obviously, the details are what um, what are the problem. Um, I mean, if there's a 200 crosswalks, uh, does that mean we may be looking at eliminating 100 or 200 parking places in the city? I mean, that's crazy. You know, and the, the pictures that were on here, the one on Main Street, obviously you can see that's a problem. The other one on King Street, to me, didn't look like a problem at all. I mean, it made the car, the gray car parked in the picture may have been within 10 feet, but just barely. And if you eliminated that parking place, then there would probably be 20 feet of space or 18 feet, whatever it is, of empty space. People would look at that and say, why isn't that a parking place? I, I mean, I say, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm in favor in concept of safety for everybody. I would vote for that. But I don't think I can vote for this language. Can we just make a re recommendation to the to the mayor's office that they further investigate 
the intricacies of crosswalks and and uh, parking spaces. Like, just make it very. Wasn't it? What, what was Wayne's motion? Do we have the language on that? Uh, uh, support in concept, but away to detailed audit. Uh, yeah, so a way to detailed audit is sort of a little bit more specific than further investigate. So if you just say that the it, that the mayor's office look into it, that they further investigate the and you know consult interested parties or whatever. I'm a little bit making this up as I go along here. So, but if I'm just trying to come to some something that is um, that is non-specific enough that it meets with everybody's approval, but that prompts the mayor's office to investigate uh, th this the this, this situation which we're just, which we're discussing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I accept that as a friendly amendment. So the amendment would read that the amendment would read that the mayor's office um, uh, investigate investigate uh, the. Um, uh, Not exactly sure that the potential conflicts with between um, parking spaces and city crosswalks. So if they just investigate it, they, they look into it, and that's it. So it's just it's a very generic thing. All we've said to them is there's an issue here. I would assume that they would discuss that with you know the departments. Um, and that that would, I'm just looking for a way to make sure that the discussion is prompted as a result of our recommendation. That's, that's all. So based on that, Beth, what do you think the motion is? <laughs> uh, that the, the motion is for the, for the, that the mayor's office in, um, investigate the, uh, potential conflicts between, um, parking spaces and crosswalks. I don't, I'm not. I'm not sure it even needs to be parking places. I mean, I know it boils down to that, but we're really wanting to improve sight lines on crosswalks. Okay, so there you go. That the, the uh, mayor's office investigate sight lines on crosswalks. I think that that is extremely generic, and I, I don't. I, and I think that it gets gets to the heart of the matter that we're trying. That everybody. It's like everybody's in agreement, right? I certainly think it's a good idea as a person that both walks and drives downtown. Back to that meeting, I'm not sneaking out though. So, <laughs> well, since you said that, do we still have a quorum? One, two, three, four, five, six. You may leave. We have to vote first if we're voting. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, 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 so I guess the motion is that the mayor's office further investigate um, sight lines uh, for crosswalks. All, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 No. <laughs> uh, any no's? We have a no. no. And do we have any abstentions? It was a no dominant. It was, it was dominant. Okay. See, that was a fun discussion, huh? So much better than just language stuff. Okay. So, the, let's see, the last item, and it's probably the first item I brought to the TPC, um, and it has a discussion of order to accept the 25 mile an hour speed limit, and um, here it is, it, uh, it dates back to uh, 2017 when it was first sent to the TPC. Um, so. Uh, that this is a um, ordinance that's sponsored by both myself and Councillor O'Donnell. It, uh, it, or actually it's an order, correct? Yeah, it's an order to accept mass general law around the uh, prima facie uh, speed limit, allowing the city of Northampton to reduce it from what is currently 30 miles an hour um, in thickly settled areas to 25 miles an hour. And um, so I'm gonna do a little talking here because I've been the person kind of uh, doing the, much of the work on this, but I wanna thank uh, Gary Hartwell. I also wanna thank Krista Granat 
I want to thank Ch Chief Casper and especially Director Lascalia for tolerating my insistence on asking over and over and over again around that. Um, so um, I would like to make a motion that we send this back to City Council with a negative recommendation. And, and I'm going to list the reasons why. Um, and that, um, and I'm still open to being convinced otherwise, uh, much to Donna's regret. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, so here are the men, there's a, there's a whole a host of problems with this, um, this order. Um, so because it's the prima facie speed limit, it can't be posted. So wherever we are establishing this, it's on, you know, imagine you're driving down a the street, there's not a speed limit sign. You're, you know, it could be off Prospect Street somewhere or off Elm Street. It's not posted. What's the speed limit? Well, nobody really, it, our prima facie right now is 30 miles an hour. Nobody really knows that, but, um, but this would say, well, we're reducing it to 25 miles an hour, and you still don't know it. <laughs> Um, the um, uh, one of the solutions that other cities and towns have had uh, uh, have done with this is to post that as you enter a city, and you'll see this in a few cities in our area. I think Greenfield has it. I've heard that Holyoke now has done this. As you enter the city, you'll see a black and amber sign set, stating you're entering. You know our our um, our speed limit on. Uh, thickly settled streets is 25 miles an hour and it's also often on a roadway where the speeds are 35 miles an hour or more so you're giving this con conflicting information as you're you know imagine you're coming over the Coolidge Bridge and then it's saying 25 miles an hour but the posted speed limit as you're going under the bridge I believe is actually 30 miles 35 miles an hour um, I'm not sure what Damon Road is you know, as we're hitting the roundabouts, we could have these things, but um, but the, the, the actual roadway that you're on would have a black and white sign stating a different speed limit. And uh, Director Lascali has been pushing back around that all, all the time. Um, that, um, that the other thing is that, um, reason number three, um, that ultimately the posted black and white signs around town will not change. That this is no bearing on the speed limit on Elm Street, Prospect Street, Chesterfield Road, everybody who's come in here, Florence Road, everybody who's come in here to speak to us about um, speeding around the city, it's where the black and white signs are. It tends to be the major thoroughfares and um, this will have no effect on that. And um, and that's, I think that many people would hold an expectation if we accepted this, that that's actually what's going on, that we're changing the speed limit on those streets. That, that wouldn't be happening. Um, let's see, oh, I, I rolled in number four with number three. Um, enforcement, enforcement is difficult. How do you enforce something uh, in, um, that uh, I wish Chief Casper were to here to confirm that I heard her say this, but that enforcement is, it would be very difficult, it would be difficult to ticket somebody uh, for driving over 25 miles an hour um, when the speed limit isn't posted. Um, and so, and the other thing is that in such situations that um, it's unlikely that the uh, police department would be seeking it. We're, mostly where this would be in effect would be on very quiet, dead end neighborhood streets. They're not on the streets where we expect enforcement. So that again, there would not be a lot of tickets for this. Um, and then the last thing, and I, I wanna thank Director Lascalio for sitting through a very long phone call um, or it took a lot of organizing with Mass Dot, and uh, after going through all of these things, I posed to there was probably what four or five engineers on the phone, and I said to them, "You folks have been seen this implemented in a numbers of cities and towns across the, the Commonwealth. In any instances, has it had a positive effect on the rate that drivers are driving?" 
and you can hear them all, you know, going, no, it hasn't done anything. That, um, that there was no effect in the cities and towns to reduce speeding by accepting this. Um, that it, in many ways it, it's, it, it is, it's a feather in, the, in their cap, but I, you know, I think, you know, for myself, I'm not interested in a feather in our cap, I'm much more interested in us actually, you know, promoting some change. So those are the reasons that I'd like to be able to send this forward to city council <coughs> with a negative recommendation to let them know that, you know, that, and that this get wrapped up, that it's been sitting at the TPC and part of our discussions for a, probably way too long. And that, um, that Councilor O'Donnell, who will be stepping down, we can wrap this up and uh, send, it on, send it on its way in December. So, um, so I would like to make, a, to make a motion that we send this forward with a negative recommendation to City Council. And I open up discussion. I'll second. Oh, thank you. Now we can talk. <laughs> so I will say thank you for your very thorough investigation <laughs> into this proposed legislation. Um, it was thorough. We've been talking about it for a long time. Um, you know, I think that you just gave a good summary of all of the reasons why this would not have a favorable impact on our community. Um, so I won't uh, belabor the point, but thank you for Did I time. miss anything? You, I mean, the, the biggest issue is that people typically drive the speed that they feel comfortable driving on the roadway. And so, you know, driver behavior is very difficult to regulate. And even with that black and white speed limit sign that you see on the roads, I mean, it's, you know, even where it's posted, um, I think people struggle to obey those limits and where it's unposted, um, you know, it's, it's even more of a challenge. Um, so, you know, there, there definitely is a real cost that in financial terms to implement this proposed ordinance um, in that we would have to put signage up at jurisdictional boundaries um, and, and that it would uh, potentially create driver confusion, um, that there would have to be a, an information campaign around this to try to re-educate drivers and it was unclear who was going to fund that or spearhead it or, or implement it in any way. Um, so I think that, um, you know, most of our streets, most of our heavily traveled roadways have a speed regulation already, which is the black and white sign. Um, and that the streets you refer to, the sort of cul-de-sacs or quiet side streets that don't have a speed regulation wouldn't really see any sort of favorable impact from this ordinance. Um, so for all of those reasons and so many more, I support what you're saying. Um, I will recognize you in a, in a few minutes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think this idea that posting a speed limit at the entrances, the various entrances to the city it's just a complete laughable fiction. That's not going to notify anyone. I both live and most people live and work in Northampton. So, I mean, I've been known to venture outside the city limits of Northampton, but um, that's the only time when you would be notified of, or reminded of that speed limit. When you're driving around Northampton, you have no notice of it whatsoever. I mean, I, I think you, um, made a compelling argument to turn this down. Ms. Bruce. You know, I, I appreciate that it's, it's not a practicality of writing tickets for non-posted signed areas. The street next to me has put up in yards 10 mile an hour speed limit signs because they are upset about the speed on Monroe. So you've got people who are literally posting their own sign. So what I want to say is that I don't think you're going to get metrics from your engineers because it would take a lot of effort to get speed studies done in non-posted areas. It's, it's just not going to lead you to conclusive evidence. So I do think it's just about messaging. And I think that's why many towns, I mean, New York has gone overboard in posting. 25 mile an hour speed limits all over. Um, 
you know, the, to me, the difference in getting hit at 25 or 35 is, is, is market. It's a, it's a big deal. So I, I'm worried about sending the message via what we're fixing to do, which is, oh, never mind. I mean, I, I admit it's been around for a long time. Uh, and you want to clean it up. And I can't make the argument that it's going to make a big difference. But I do think it is an issue of messaging. And we all want to, I mean, we want, why do we have traffic calming? We want traffic to go slower. So I, I just, I can't feel good about saying, oh, never mind. Um, it's, it's, uh, it is an issue of posting. I don't want to waste money. I hear that. But just as a voice who says, gee, I hate to, I hate to turn our back on the idea that we could communicate that we're a town that values traffic being really careful. So um, I don't think it's a matter of posting everywhere. I don't know if it's required that you post it uh, on every entrance to town just because you said that. Um, yeah, you know, I, I admit all your reasons sound good, but I'm not I'm not looking for proof and concept that traffic slows down because we deem twenty five the minimum, you know, the, the de facto speed. So I just I can't feel good about it. That's that's where I am with it. I, I I appreciate the not wasting money. I'm not after that. I appreciate the fact that it, if you don't post it, does it really does the message get out? but to send a message to council that we've been thinking about this for a while and as other towns are moving ahead to do that, we're like, no, we don't, we don't want to go there. So I just, I'm, I'm, in, I'm caught. Well, it, it, to make it clear, I'm not saying this is, a, I'm not saying this is strictly about money. I mean, that's a, that is a piece of this is that there is a cost to implement this. Yeah. Um, but there's also, I mean, you talked about communication, so there is a communication piece to this as well. So enacting an ordinance like this requires some level of communication. And from the beginning, it has always been unclear what that communication would be, who it would come from, yeah. who it would be directed to, and, and how. Um, so, you know, those, I, I mean, those. Yeah, I don't think it's ticketing. Of, I don't think it's signing. I think it is messaging. I hear you. But there, there's never been any sort of commitment by any entity within the city to say this is how it's going to be done. You know, I look at this strictly from an operational standpoint and say, how many streets are we actually talking about here? Um, you know, where are they? What's our average daily traffic on them? You know, what is the impact of something like this? And you know, based on our analysis, we we don't see it. I mean, the police chief's not here to speak to this and. I would even suggest that we wait until the police chief maybe were present to have a more in-depth conversation around this because she's an important piece of this. But that's just me. Yeah, well, I think with regard to messaging, I know Wayne's looking at trying to develop a traffic calming mm -hmm. um, document, and it, it seems like it would belong there. All, all the people, I don't know what our number of traffic calming requests has gotten to, but it's you know, still up in the teens somewhere. But all those people want 20, you know, they want something slower than what's happening. That's what, that's what generates the energy. But, and that's where the misnomer comes in here is that this legislation actually does not have the power to, do to change anybody's speed limit right. from what it currently is. The only thing this can do is change a speed limit on a completely unposted road, right. like a cul-de-sac. Well, I mean, I think it applies to my very story in my neighborhood in Monroe. That's a, that's a street that has no posting. You know, it's a three blocks long dead end, but. Well, and the, the other thing that made adopting this ordinance complicated is this applies to um, thickly settled areas. And there are metrics that you have to hit in order to be considered thickly settled. Okay. So there was also some question right. that an audit would be needed citywide to determine what is actually thickly settled and what is not thickly settled because you have to hit certain metrics or you're not thickly settled and this actually doesn't apply. So this, this has sort of been hanging around out there for a really long time because there were more questions around this than answers and the implementation of something like this was actually just a little bit confusing you adopt this and then it is unclear what it actually applies to. Um, is it okay if I recognize Alex? Anybody, somebody want to make a motion to recognize Alex? 
I'll make a motion to recommend Dallas. Second. second. All right. Thanks. Um, so like I said, I live on Summer Street. It is a densely populated area and there is no speed limit posted there. It would make a huge difference if people drove 25 rather than 30 there. Um, but I understand that this doesn't do anything to actually change how fast people drive. I would love to have some traffic enforcement, have a police officer there that, that would help people <laughs> drive slower very quickly. Um, so uh, I, I, I like the um, idea of signaling um, what the culture is here. I think that's valuable. Um, and I agree that without enforcement and actual traffic calming, it might not change a lot. But I, I live on Summer Street, so there, there definitely are places like that where the speed limit is not posted. Um, it's not one of those main um, corridors where you're getting most of the traffic calming applications from. Um, but it is some, somewhere that would be affected by, by this. We're out there. <laughs> Yeah, I think the message would more likely be confusion than slow down. So, um, any more discussion before we vote? I don't think it would be a bad idea to continue this for one more meeting. Until Chief Casper's here. Okay. So I'm willing to withdraw my motion because then we could send it to council in December, later December, and dispense with it if, if that's what we voted on. <laughs> um, so I'll withdraw my motion and uh, my, I'll make another motion to table this until next month until Chief Casper's here to also weigh in on this. Um, do I have a second? discussion I just want to add one more thing which mm -hmm. is that um, that I'm you know I'm not giving up on this because the black and white signs that's I'm like what came to you know it's just like we need to change those black and white signs we got to come up with a better way to do this and um, and Senator Comerford who arranged this phone call uh, uh, amongst the many things she's like a dog to a bone to, that one of them is has to do with uh, uh, mass dot and the way we do our speed limits. So um, that I, I'm very interested in, you know, looking at ways so we can revisit um, the way we, um, uh, we do, we establish speed limits. I think it's crazy. We have a 35 mile now, 30, 35 mile an hour speed limit in front of the high school that you actually speed up. You go from 30 by Cooley Dick, and then the 35 by the high school, and then it goes back down as you go down Elm Street. It's nuts. <laughs> and, but we have no power to really change that. And that, um, that having you know, some latitude locally to be able to come up with some realistic solutions to this. I think uh, Director Lascalia had done an evaluation of what was the Chesterfield Road that there was, um, when we were do, looking at that, that there was a number of, that the speeds went up and down over the length of that road. And it would make any driver confused as they go from 30 to 45 to 35 to whatever. So um, anyway, that's, that's gonna be where my attention's gonna be going, whether I'm part of the TPC or not. So, um, so I'm not giving up. <laughs> Um, so, um, all in favor of tabling this till next month, uh, say aye. 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 Uh, any abstentions? Any no's? Okay. All right. Um, that is it for our agenda. And once again, we are finished up before 5.30. I've had a very good last year. <laughs> and um, would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Oh, new business. Oh, yes, there any new business? I don't think so. <laughs> Hearing no new business, <laughs> is there a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. Uh, is second. there a second? No, oh, there was a first minute. We have Gary and um, Alan. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. aye.
Any abstentions, any nays? Okay, thank you everybody.